we're taking him and we're putting him in uh, what I would consider uh, protective custody. Is there some reason for protective custody beyond his we just own? We just don't want anyone bothering him. He doesn't know anything about the case. Uh, he is uninvolved, and we're going to be sure that he's not bothered and given a chance to uh, recuperate after this nightmare that he's gone through. Well, we learned the other day that apparently he had given some names to police. Does that uh, place him in danger? As far as I know, he's in no danger whatsoever. He gave no names to police officers of people who he considered to be a suspect. The only names involved are the names of people or acquaintances of his, and the police are checking them out routinely as they're checking out all other acquaintances of the murdered people. But has he been fully released, sir? He is released. I'm confident that he will not be rebooked in any charge, and uh, as far as criminal charges, the matter is at an end. Then is there uh, no reason why he just couldn't say briefly as to what happened that night, as far as he remembers? Well, the reason is that because of this situation he's gone through, he's in terrible shape. That's why. Uh, if you can imagine being dragged out of your house and thrown into a nightmare like this when you're not even involved and when you're not 19 years old, and when you're 19 years old, uh, I think uh, you can understand the situation that the boy is in. And I think he's entitled to a little rest, a little relaxation. And at the appropriate time, he will make a statement to you about everything connected with the case. How about the polygraph test? Yesterday, uh, Mr. Tarlow, was indicated that certain physical evidence had to be checked. Can you tell us about that? Well, I think that was just a device for delaying his release a little longer. up there and I'll meet you over at the uh, there's a there's a gate and so if you just uh, like UCLA goes out of the huddle Go ahead. you know what we're looking for huh Uh, how did they connect her with the Tate case? Well, apparently the police have gathered information from a number of persons and uh, she was one of the suspects named. Has she been placed in custody uh, for that? Uh, no, it? not yet. Do you anticipate that she will? I've been informed that she will be one of the persons whose names will be brought before the grand jury. Is she a member of the commune uh, that we've heard described by the chief of police of Los Angeles? Uh, yes, she is. How long had she been with him? For about three years. What type of plea will you make? Uh, well, from what she tells me and from the, um, assuming they have sufficient evidence to connect her to any of these crimes, it would seem to me that uh, she was totally under the power of this one person who was in charge of the commune, who called himself a god and a devil, and that she would just do his bidding. Did the others also uh, operate that same way? This is my understanding, although I can say that my client did not kill anyone. I, I've had complete conversations with, with her regarding all of these affairs and episodes, and at no time did she actually do any physical killing herself. Was she at the scene uh, of these three murders? Well, the, the, the police say they have evidence that she was. Uh, of course, that's a matter which I'll have to discuss further with her. Well, is that why she left the state? Is she, was she afraid of him? 
Oh, I can't answer that. We just she's very happy to be in custody. Is she, do you think she the, feels she has protection now? Well, well, she she told anything feel free to tell. Yes. Al, Gary, fine. Uh, we, we, I don't want to answer that right now until we've talked to her at length this is, afternoon. As, as her attorneys, we have no worries. Well, has she, has she indicated that anyone has made an attempt on her life or threatened her life since this happened? No, she hasn't told me that, but she is frightened. And uh, I don't want to say any more about her attitude toward these people right now. Has she said anything about uh, the way she's been living at all? Well, of course, exactly. uh, I represented her back in September, and she uh, has indicated that she has been living, uh, taking care of her baby by herself. She mm -hmm. is separated from her husband. That's all I can say about well, that. What was she though. represented for in September, Gary? Uh, this involved, I didn't represent her, this involved obtaining custody of her baby for her again. Right, so where's, where's the baby now? I'd rather not say right now. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, Mr. Matthews, you said something about, uh, as, your, as her attorneys, you feel confident. Was that your, was that your we word? have no worries. No worries. No That's worries great. about what? We're very happy to represent this particular young lady. Al, could I ask you this? How did you come to represent her? Uh, through uh, Gary? Yes. Yes, I brought Al into the case with me. Al and I have been associated in, oh, 20 or 30 cases over the last mm -hmm. eight or nine years since I left the prosecutor's office. What is she well, specifically charged with for this procession? We're going to find out We're going to find out right now what, if anything, she's charged know. with. We don't know. Well, do you feel confident that she may be uh, exonerated uh, by any charges against her in the Absolutely. state Absolutely. No problem. Absolutely. You don't feel she had any role in the, in the murders? Well, the police have no, identified sir. her as one of the prime suspects. She's a suspect. She's only accused right now. The police weren't there. Thank you. Gentlemen. All right. Uh, the contents of the indictment, Mr. Bishop? All I can tell you is that we indicted six people on eight counts. Can you give us their names? Uh, I can't give them to you offhand. Mr. Mr. Bishop, the, uh, the uh, decision was made rather quickly uh, when you consider all the people you had to listen to. Can you tell us uh, something about that? No, I have no comment on that. Uh, Mr. Bishop, what is your reaction to the type of testimony that the grand jury has been listening to in this case? Will you explain that a little bit further, what you mean by the well, question? Well, it shocking. It was very shocking, very shocking. It was a terrible group of murders. It was probably the worst in the history of California. 
Pardon me. Was it the was testimony of Susan Atkins that uh, really cinched it? Well, that certainly was a part of it. Was there any discussion in there about granting immunity to anyone in this case? No. No one was granted any immunity. <laughs> Uh, it is difficult to determine at this time whether the Office of the Public Defender will be Mr. Manson's trial counsel. Certainly Mr. Manson uh, may retain counsel, a private counsel of his own choosing before trial, and uh, as was indicated in the colloquy uh, between counsel and the bench, uh, there may uh, exist a conflict of interest. Could you explain the conflict of interest, how it comes about? Well, we, first of all, I want to point out that we don't know that there is a conflict of interest. Uh, there are several defendants in this case, however, and there are several, uh, well, there are many defendants represented by the Office of the Public Defender. One of those other persons we represent may in some way be associated with this case. They may be associated in this case in some way that is adverse to Mr. Manson. So we might be in this situation of representing both an adverse witness uh, and, uh, and defendant Manson, in which case that would be uh, an impossible burden for an attorney to represent uh, people having very substantially conflicting interests.
In the parlance of the street, uh, your client has sung like a canary in the Manson uh, Labianca killings. Why? Uh, she has, as I indicated before, the, uh, she has been cooperating on my advice based upon the evidence that was shown to me by the district attorney's office when I first entered this case. I felt it's to her advantage, and she has so done. How about in the Hinman case? Has she uh, made any statements in that admitting guilt? Well, when I got into the Hinman case, she had already had a preliminary hearing, and at the preliminary hearing, officers testified regarding uh, what she had told them, which implicated her in the Hinman matter insofar as those statements were concerned. Are you going to permit her to talk to Manson in his case? If she wants to, I will permit her. Why? Because he's a co-defendant in the case. She will be... Uh, uh, in the trial, she's charged with the same offenses. There may be a lot of things of common interest that he may want to know and that I may want to know. Has she, she made any decision? About him? That, that question I can probably answer for you better after she meets him. Have Has you made any decision yet on what, uh, whether or not she will take the stand? Well, I would imagine if we go to trial, she will take the stand. One uh, attorney to represent the entire Manson family? I've heard a, a, a rumor to that effect. I'm, other than that, I know nothing more about it. You're her attorney actually from day to day, really. Yes, I'm, I'm her private retained counsel, yes. What are some of the other ground rules that you talked about today? Can you tell us anything about that? Well, we spoke about the order of uh, presenting, me, the order of presenting the evidence. We also discussed the possible length of the trial. It appears now from the estimate of all the attorneys involved that the trial might take about a half a year. Vince, in, in light of the fact that the uh, Beausoleil conviction has been reaffirmed this morning, is there a possibility you may go with the Hinman trial first relative to Manson and Atkins and hold no. the Tate LaBianca matter? No, there's no chance of that. No. So the Hinman trial will no the Hinman trial will be subsequent to the Tate LaBianca trial. Yeah. So what gives like you the estimate for a six month trial? We have upwards of 100 witnesses. We anticipate that our case in chief will take approximately three months to put on. This is after we've selected the jury. Then the defense will take perhaps a month to put on their case. It'll take probably two weeks in rebuttal. The arguments and the jury deliberations will take another two weeks. And the penalty phase, assuming we secure uh, convictions, will take another two or three weeks. The judge, in denying the motion for a new trial and in denying the petition for a reduction of sentence in this case, called it one of the most hideous cases he's ever sat through. Uh, what is the next step legally now? Does this go before the appellate court for review? Yes. Uh, under a sentence of death, this matter uh, is appealed directly to the Supreme Court. That means it goes up on automatic appeal to the California Supreme Court. What was behind Mary Bruner's uh, first in court this morning? I think, again, that she is feeling the strong uh, loyalties towards the uh, members of the Manson family and feels that she took a part or played a part by reason of her truthful testimony in court in securing a death sentence for Robert Kenneth Beausoleil, also a member of the Manson is family. Is your office going to take any action against her? No, we contemplate no action against her at this time. How long will it take the Supreme Court to review this case and hand down its decision? I wouldn't suspect that this case will reach the Supreme Court before a year and a half to two years. Thank you, Bert. Could we uh, ask you to read the letter which you say you have from? That was not gone into, uh, of course, if the defendants uh, continue to act disruptively in court, the judge is going to have to have to determine how to handle that matter at that. We've subpoenaed 80 thus far, but I anticipate that we'll call approximately 100 during our case in chief. How many peremptory challenges does each uh, defense attorney have? All defendants can exercise 20 peremptory challenges jointly. In addition there to the... I sense the uh, judge is going to sequester this jury throughout this trial, which may be the longest trial in California criminal trial history. Uh, it seems to me you're going to have to get uh, persons who are retired or persons who have no uh, jobs, persons perhaps who have even no family. 
Uh, do you think you're going to have this, uh, these kind of problems? We discussed that in chambers just recently, and of course we're going to have that problem, and that was what we addressed ourselves to. Uh, this would come under the nature of, I would imagine, some sort of hardship uh, uh, excusal from uh, jury service. In other words, we're going to go into matters uh, economic, um, uh, family, uh, health, and the like that uh, would make it unlikely for jurors to be able to sit around for six months to a year uh, during the time that we'll be uh, trying the case. Is anything going to take place in court today relative to the Rolling Stone interview that uh, the prosecutor, Mr. Stovitz, grant? Yes. Uh, What do you see at this moment as the uh, greatest problem in getting the trial underway? Uh, probably uh, the voir dire of the jury, the mm -hmm. questioning of prospective jurors. Now, how many uh, jurors do you think are going to have to be uh, uh, voir dire before you come up with a jury? Any idea at all? That would be just a wild guess. I'd rather not guess. But the first panel will consist of about 80 jurors. Oh, I don't know what the court has ordered, how many people the court has ordered uh -huh. over. Yeah. All right. Dave, uh, you just came back from Tokyo. I understand you had illness in the family over there. Uh, you've been sort of out of it for the last few weeks. If any of the defendants act up in a Rubenesque type fashion in court? Well, I think the only um, action he can take uh, is to either, you know, stop the proceedings at that This is a letter from Mary Bruner. Friday morning, I testified as a witness for Bobby. What I said at that time was the truth. Bobby did not stab and kill Gary, and neither did Charlie, Bruce, Sadie, or me. I can't say who did it, but I wasn't, it wasn't done by a member of the family. I wouldn't say who did it before, and when the police last December said Bobby was blaming the murder on me and threatened me with probation violation, a murder charge, and the loss of the baby, I was frightened and I put it on Bobby. Then I testified to the same things that were in the original statement because I was told I would be prosecuted if I didn't. The affidavit I made in May is true, and I offered through Mr. Graves to take a lie detector test on this in court. However, the judge did not permit this and said either I cooperate with the prosecution or be arrested immediately for murder. Bobby saw how some fears were rekindled by the judge's threats especially and also by what the lawyer told me about the charges of what of not going along with the court at this time. It is obvious that the DA and the Judge Keene are not interested in truth. They want their conviction of Bobby and the only other person they would accept as the killer is Charlie. They are not guilty and I am completely willing to take a lie detector test on this point at any time. <laughs> Say hello again. Oh, hi. What's your comment after being arraigned on a charge of murder? Oh, I don't have one. Really? Are you frightened at all? No, I expected it. Really? Does the uh, possibility of a death penalty frighten you? Um, or does you death... know, that's so far off. Like, uh, there's next week is court coming up, and uh, that's as far uh -huh. ahead as I'm going right now. Well, Mary, can you tell us, you say that Bobby, nor you, nor Susan killed Gary Hinman. Who did, Take Charlie yeah. out of there, too. And Charlie. Yeah. Oh, take Bruce, too, by the way. Okay. I forgot he was in on uh, it. Who did do the killing? I can't tell you who did that. Well, do you know? 
I mean, can you tell us that? I, you know... I mean, without naming names, do you happen to know? This isn't putting anybody on the spot, if, if that's what you're afraid of. Do you really know who did it? I uh, might say that, yeah. Uh -huh. Do you know the motive for it? Well, that's more than I want to get into. Uh-huh. Okay. You know now that you may never see your baby again, or at least for a long, long time. Does this have any effect on you? Of course it has an effect on me. Did you think about this before you made your latest move? Yes. Uh-huh. But you decided it was better to do it this way? That's right. Uh-huh. You're 26 years old, I believe. That's right. Uh-huh. Do you feel that your life has been wasted at all? You gotta be kidding. Go ahead. Well, Gary was a, he was a very sweet person. He, you know, he tended to take care of people. He was very warm, very outgoing, mm -hmm. very verbal. He was extremely bright. Uh -huh. He was studying for his doctorate in political science. He was an accomplished musician as well. Yes, also. How do you think he might have gotten involved with the people in the Manson uh, tribe? Well, Gary had a penchant for helping out people that were in trouble. He, you know, fed them and gave them a place to stay. And it was, um, he did this with a lot of people. And I assume that this is probably how he, you know, came in contact with a number of people in the family. Did he ever talk to you about any of the members of the family? No. No, he did not. He never mentioned the family? No. What was your first reaction when you'd heard about uh, his death? Shock. And, I, I, because... Surprise? <laughs> Yes, because I couldn't understand how anyone would kill Gary. I mean, he just wasn't the kind of person who would get physically aggressive or, or that you could get uh, angry with. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand what a motive would be. I, Gary Hinman was a person that would have been almost impossible to rob because he would have given you whatever he had you or know? whatever you needed. Well, I'm not going to the court unless you're other man comes out and you can't you know, see. I don't want to go into the court. When they select the jury, those seats are no longer there. They start selecting the jury. Is there any particular thing that is more difficult about picking this jury than anything else? I mean, is there an age factor? Is there a, well, yeah. a vacation factor? What yeah, the, the hang difficult up? thing about this case is number one, it's going to last uh, six months uh, at least. Number two, the jury is going to be sequestered. So what we're talking about then is taking jurors away from their livelihood and taking them away from their families. This is an enormous burden to place on a, a juror. So you're likely to get either a, a very young jury mm -hmm. or a very old jury. I would say so, yes. Yes, the, the pickings are going to be kind of slim, really. Uh, there aren't that many people who can uh, actually do that, Dick. What did you uh, want to say to her? And was it your idea or, Ch or Charlie's idea? <laughs> huh? My very own idea. Yeah. And uh, Linda is a Linda is a friend of mine. I know that. And um, she hasn't she hasn't been able to see anybody for a long, long, long time. Yeah. She's been programmed and programmed and programmed with negative programming mm -hmm. to where she's. She's frightened. She wants her children back. It, whatever, whatever she has to do to get her children back, she's doing it, mm -hmm. whether it's true or untrue. And um, I can see where she'd, she would do anything to get out of jail and to get her kids back. Mm -hmm. But she's taking a lot of peace. She's um, putting a lot of people in jeopardy at the same time. Yes. Robert, uh, you're Linda's husband. Yes. Uh, why are you here? To give Linda comfort. Did she ask you to come here? Well, I'm here on my own. I see. 
Now, you told me a while ago that you regard Charlie Manson as the Antichrist. He's a false prophet and has come to deceive as many people as he can. Mm -hmm. You also, I think, to quote you correctly, said that he trips differently than you other hippies. Yeah, he's, he's bloodthirsty. We're not. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of hippies that ain't on his trip. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of us that are waiting for the real Christ. Have any of the family members contacted you and through you tried to get Linda not to testify? Sure. When did that happen? All along. Uh, what did they ask you to tell Linda? Just that, that we should bow down and worship Charlie like everybody. The judge has signed an order under section 1324 of our penal code wherein she cannot be prosecuted for any crimes that she talks about on the witness stand in these proceedings or in any other proceedings. Physically, the district attorney's office must move to dismiss the indictment, which they will do shortly, under yet another section of the penal code, section 1099. Now, this is a technicality which we have not taken up with them too strongly right now, because at least for the time being, both Linda and my partner and I have no objection to her remaining in custody. Uh, my Iran puts it this way, it's like a monopoly game. We got a, a get out of jail free card in our pockets. They, whether we want to use it right now or not, we haven't made up our minds because our original agreement was that the immunity and the 1099 dismissal of the charges would only come at the end of her testimony. In general, what security precautions have you taken? Well, uh, let me put it this way. She will be brought back and forth uh, to the place where she, from, from the place where she's staying by uh, officers of the Los Angeles Police Department. As you can understand, the Sheriff's Department, they're jailers. They no longer have any jurisdiction over Linda. She's a free person. The Police Department, upon our request, is going to provide transportation for, for her and security precautions, I think, during the rest of the cross and redirect examination here, probably if she's recalled for by the defense or for rebuttal, and probably at the time she is called, if she's called as a witness in the Charles Watson case. In any event, they're going to, to be with her. We're not in a position to, to give her security. We're just her lawyers. We can give her our affection and our legal advice, but we really can't provide security. My son uh, has all the intelligence in the world of being his own attorney. He's very capable. You're saying the jury was unfair on their decision? The jury did not follow the court's, instru court's instructions given by Judge Keene. If they had, my son would be acquitted today. What instructions? The instructions were very clear in the court. The judge said to handle with mistrust anyone that would get immunity in a case such as this not to completely outrule their testimony, but consider with distrust. Also, the fact that uh, immunity was given to Mary Bruner, uh, deals were made with Danny DiCarlo in the first trial and possibly in this one. He's charged of all types of felonies. Our son has no other uh, previous convictions, but this one, uh, he spoke a sincere and honest testimony and the jury refused to believe it. And uh, I feel that those people are going to have to live with themselves, and I pray for them. Are you in agreement, agreement with the uh, uh, verdict? Yes, I'm in agreement with the verdict. I think it comports with justice. As I indicated before, I'm always sad to see a death penalty verdict returned. And I, my heart goes out to the parents, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Beausoleil. Are you surprised at the verdict? Oh, I was shocked. I was completely surprised. I uh, just can't see it.